Agnes's Place by Merritt Larson Illustrations by Jenny Lovely Translated by Carrie Dixon This city has so many buildings, so many roofs and walls and doors, and windows and doorbells and trees, and secrets. And this is where Agnes lives, right here. It is almost impossible to imagine that she would live anywhere else. She knows she is at home before she even opens her eyes in the morning. She knows who is baking, who is playing, and who is saying shush. She knows that the birds are hungry and that she is the only one who remembers. She knows who has the best parties, who celebrates Christmas all year round, and who gets the giggles when they're all alone. She knows who is outdoors and indoors and who never goes out at all. She knows what it is like to be the only child in a place full of adults who never have time. From her window on the third floor, Agnes looks down at a perfect puddle that is just the right size when it rains just enough. The new girl was standing beside it when Agnes saw her for the first time. The girl's gaze moved slowly up the wall. What was she looking for? Is she looking for me, Agnes thought? That was before Agnes knew that Anna was Anna. Agnes squeezed her eyes shut and opened them again, but the girl was still there. Did she have a key? Was she going to live here? Agnes looked through the little people in the door that made her invisible, her nose pressed to the cold metal. The new girl stole silently past Amadeus, who was lying curled up pretending to sleep. Agnes giggled without a sound. Box after box after box passed by Agnes's door on their way up to the fifth floor. Agnes had an idea. She got a large piece of paper and drew a tree in the backyard with two empty swings. She drew the tracks left in the gravel by those who had jumped off. Then she wrote, HERE in big letters. Agnes waited until all was quiet, then crept out and sneaked up the stairs and slipped the drawing through the letterbox. She felt her heart pounding in her cheeks and ears. Done, she whispered to Amadeus. Playing alone on the swing is very different from playing alone on the swing when you are waiting for someone who does not show up. The next day, everything was as usual when Agnes woke up, only everything was different. She crept out of bed, opened her windows wide, and put a handful of birdseed in the birdhouse. Then another, and another, nothing. Swoosh! Five, fifteen, maybe fifty birds flew up in a flock, right past Agnes's window and up toward the roof. They settled outside the new girl's window. Agnes caught a glimpse of her arm on the windowsill. After breakfast, Agnes went down to the swings again and practiced some tricks, some new, some old, and some wild and wonderful. Every so often, she would look up at her building, which was somehow a new place now. Suddenly, everything Agnes usually did was all about the new girl. Did she see what Agnes saw? Did she hear what Agnes heard? Agnes waited by the swings each day. She waited until she got hungry or it was so late that her mom called her in. Meanwhile, the new girl had discovered the puddle all on her own. She held concerts for anyone who would listen. She did lots of fun things. It almost seemed as if the only thing Anna was not interested in was Agnes. Even Amadeus had found a new playmate. Disappointed, Agnes went down to get Amelia's newspaper, just as she had always done. Agnes knew exactly which stone made her tall enough to reach into the mailbox. But today, it was empty. The newspaper was not there. It is a bit strange, isn't it, that you can just move into a place without asking everyone who lives there if they think it's okay? 
Agnes said in a quiet voice. Well, now, we've all been new at one time or another, even me. That's a really strange thought for you, perhaps. There weren't many teeth left in Amelia's grin. Now, would you like a waffle? But Agnes didn't want one. A waffle is not much comfort when you are five and have no secrets left to share. Then suddenly, there they were on the stairs, both of them in the same moment. And they were both the same size, and they were both just as quiet. Agnes looked at Anna's hat. Anna looked at Agnes's sweater. They could have been knit from the same ball of wool. Anna held out her hand and opened it. Agnes thought it looked like she had the whole universe in the palm of her hand. Before they knew it, the stairwell had transformed into an ocean of blue, green, turquoise, yellow, purple, and red waves. And Agnes and Anna stared at the waves and each other, and then Agnes started to laugh, which made Anna laugh too. And they stood there with their mouths open wide, laughing louder and louder on the seabed until Anna carefully gathered all her marbles in one hand and grabbed Agnes's hand with the other. The door became a stair, became a long ladder to a place where Agnes had never been before. It turned out that Anna had her own secrets and they were wild and wonderful. The end.